Nick Nolte, the actor, has had a long and successful career in the film industry. Born in Omaha, Nebraska, on February 8, 1941, Nolte started his career in the late 1960s with guest appearances on television shows. In the 1970s, Nolte gained recognition for his roles in films such as The Deep and 48 HRS. His performance in The Prince of Tides earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor in 1992. Nolte's portrayal of a troubled war veteran in Affliction won him the award for Best Actor at the Cannes Film Festival in 1998. Throughout his career, Nolte has shown his versatility as an actor, taking on a wide range of roles in both film and television. He has played everything from a tough cop to a sensitive artist, always bringing depth and authenticity to his characters. Nolte's work in the 2000s includes notable roles in Hotel Rwanda and Warrior, for which he received his third Academy Award nomination. His latest film, Head Full of Honey, sees him playing a grandfather suffering from Alzheimer's disease. Despite his success, Nolte remains humble and dedicated to his craft. He continues to challenge himself with new roles and has become a respected and beloved figure in the film industry. Nick Nolte is a classic star, known for his work in both film and television. You might be familiar with his roles in movies like 48 HRRs and The Prince of Tides. Do you have any lesser known facts or anecdotes about Nick Nolte that you find fascinating? One of Nolte's most iconic roles was in the film The Prince of Tides, where he played a troubled man struggling to come to terms with his past. This performance earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Do you believe this role defined his career? Or was there another performance that stood out to you? Perhaps you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic star. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. There are many funny, shocking, and sad facts about Nick Nolte that you won't want to miss. From his early days in Hollywood to his more recent projects, there's no shortage of intriguing stories to tell, so keep watching to learn more. Nick Nolte was born in Omaha, Nebraska in 1941 to a father who worked as a farmer and a mother with a passion for drama. His parents' divorce when he was young marked the start of a series of moves for Nolte and his family, eventually settling in California. It was there that Nolte first became exposed to acting, taking part in high school plays and community theater. A significant influence on Nolte's path to acting was his high school drama teacher, Edward Glaser. Glaser recognized Nolte's talent and encouraged him to pursue acting further. Nolte enrolled in Pasadena Playhouse's theater program after high school, where he honed his craft and developed his unique style. Another key influence on Nolte's career was his time spent in New York City during the 1960s. He became involved in the city's thriving off-Broadway scene, appearing in numerous productions and working alongside other aspiring actors and directors. This experience exposed Nolte to a diverse range of acting styles and techniques, further shaping his approach to the craft. In addition to his formal training and early experiences, Nolte has cited a number of classic films and actors as influences on his career. Among them are Marlon Brando, James Dean, and Montgomery Clift, all of whom were known for their intense and deeply emotional performances. Nolte has often sought to bring a similar level of depth and complexity to his own roles, earning critical acclaim and a devoted following in the process. Nick Nolte, an actor known for his rugged good looks and intense method acting, made a significant impact in the film industry during his era and beyond. In the 1970s, he emerged as a leading man in films such as Who'll Stop the Rain and 48 HRS, where he showcased his ability to play complex characters with depth and nuance. Throughout his career, Nolte has chosen roles that challenge him as an actor and push boundaries. He has played a diverse range of characters, from a troubled Vietnam War veteran to a charismatic convict. His performances are often raw and intense, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Nolte's contribution to Hollywood extends beyond his acting abilities. He has produced and directed films, showcasing his versatility in the industry. In the 1990s, he produced and starred in the critically acclaimed film The Prince of Tides, which earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. One of Nolte's most memorable roles was in the 2010 film A Walk in the Woods, where he starred alongside Robert Redford. The film was a departure from Nolte's usual intense roles, showcasing his comedic timing and ability to play more lighthearted characters. Nolte's impact on the film industry is undeniable. He has inspired countless actors and filmmakers with his unique approach to acting and his willingness to take on challenging roles. 
his contributions to Hollywood have left a lasting legacy, and his influence can still be seen in modern cinema. In conclusion, Mick Nolte's impact on the film industry is significant and enduring. His ability to play complex characters and push boundaries has left a lasting impression on audiences and inspired countless actors and filmmakers. His contributions to Hollywood, both as an actor and a filmmaker, have cemented his place as a legend in the industry. As a young man, Nick Nolte found himself drawn to the stage. After serving in the military, he enrolled in a Pasadena theater group, where he discovered his passion for acting. In one pivotal moment, he was cast in a small role in a play, but the lead actor failed to show up. Nolte stepped in, delivering a powerful performance that left the audience in awe. This experience solidified his desire to pursue a career in acting. Nolte's film debut came in 1972 with The Thing Called Love. But it wasn't until his role in the 1977 miniseries Rich Man, Poor Man that he gained widespread recognition. The show was a massive hit, and Nolte's portrayal of a troubled Vietnam War veteran earned him an Emmy nomination. Despite his success, Nolte remained grounded and committed to his craft. He once said, I've always been interested in the human condition. I think that's why I became an actor, to explore the complexities of human behavior. Throughout his career, Nolte has delivered captivating performances in a variety of classic films, including 48 HRS, The Prince of Tides, and Affliction. His ability to portray complex and flawed characters has earned him critical acclaim and the admiration of audiences worldwide. In recent years, Nolte has continued to challenge himself as an actor, taking on roles in independent films and television shows. His enduring passion for his craft and his willingness to take risks have made him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. In The Thin Red Line, the actor Nick Nolte, playing Lieutenant Colonel Tall, engages in a heated confrontation with Captain Staros. Following their exchange, Captain Staros, portrayed by Elias Codius, hangs up the sound power and mutters in Greek, he's lost it. He doesn't know what he's saying. The line is not present in Jones's novel, adding to the film's originality. In Rich Man, Poor Man, Noel takes on the role of Tom Jordak, while Don Johnson, a close friend of Nolte, and his co-star in Return to Macon County, auditioned for the part of Rudy Jordache. Interestingly, the actor Nick Nolte and poet Ted Kuser grew up only a block apart in Ames, Iowa's historic Old Town neighborhood. This geographical proximity in their youth provides a unique connection between the two. Nick Nolte, a small-town boy from rural America, faced numerous obstacles on his journey to becoming a successful actor. Financial struggles were a constant challenge for him. To make ends meet, he took on various jobs, from digging ditches to selling encyclopedias door to door. Despite these hardships, Nolte never lost sight of his dream to become an actor. The film industry was skeptical of Nolte's talent at first. He struggled to find acting roles and was often rejected. However, Nolte refused to give up. He honed his craft by taking acting classes and performing in local theater productions. His persistence paid off when he landed his first major film role in Who'll Stop the Rain in 1978. Nolte's resilience was also tested when he developed a reputation for being difficult to work with. He was known for his intense method acting style and his tendency to clash with directors. However, instead of letting this reputation define him, Nolte used it as an opportunity to push himself further and prove his worth as an actor. One of the creative solutions Nolte found to overcome industry skepticism was to produce and star in his own films. He co-produced and starred in the film Down and Out in Beverly Hills in 1986, which was a critical and commercial success. This move not only showcased Nolte's talent as an actor, but also his business acumen. Nolte's ability to overcome obstacles and forge his own path in the film industry is a testament to his resilience and determination. His story serves as an inspiration to aspiring actors and a reminder that success is possible, even in the face of adversity. Nick Nolte was initially considered for the role of Dan Gallagher in the 1987 thriller, Fatal Attraction, but the part eventually went to Michael Douglas. However, this didn't stop the actor's rise to fame. In fact, Nolte's first lead role in a major American film was as David Sanders in the adventure drama, The Deep, released in 1977. Before making it big in Hollywood, Nolte honed his craft at the Old Log Theater in Excelsior, Minnesota. This classic theater is one of the longest continually operating professional theaters in America, providing a nurturing ground for many aspiring actors. It's here that Nolte no doubt developed the skills that would later make him a household name. 
In the early 1970s, Nick Nolte's career took off with his role in the groundbreaking television series Rich Man, Poor Man, where he played the complex character of Tom Jordax. This role earned him an Emmy nomination and solidified his status as a rising star. A few years later, in 1977, the actor showcased his versatility in the critically acclaimed film Who'll Stop the Rain. His portrayal of a disillusioned Vietnam War veteran was praised for its depth and intensity, earning him widespread recognition. In the 1990s, the actor delivered another career-defining performance in The Prince of Tides. Directed by Barbara Streisand, this classic film earned Nolte his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. His co-star Streisand praised his dedication to the craft, stating, Nick's ability to immerse himself in his roles is truly inspiring. In 1999, the actor took on the challenging role of W.W. Beauchamp in The Legend of Bagger Vance. His nuanced performance was widely acclaimed, with critics praising his ability to bring depth and authenticity to the character. More recently, in 2014, the actor starred in the gritty drama A Walk in the Woods, alongside Robert Redford. His performance was lauded for its humor and humanity, with critics noting his ability to bring warmth and charm to even the most complex characters. Throughout his career, Nick Nolte has consistently delivered captivating performances that have left a lasting impact on audiences and critics alike. His dedication to his craft and his ability to bring depth and authenticity to his roles have cemented his place as a true Hollywood legend. After playing college football for Arizona State University, Nick Nolte found success in a different arena acting. In the film Who'll Stop the Rain, Nolte played the character Ray Hicks alongside Tuesday Weld, although it's worth noting that the two actors did not particularly enjoy working together. Despite any onset tension, Nolte's career continued to thrive. In the classic film 48 HRS, he took on the role of Jack Cates, a cop who teams up with a convict, played by Eddie Murphy. The film's marketing played up the contrast between the two characters, with posters featuring the tagline The Boys Are Back in Town. Nick Nolte is a cop. Eddie Murphy is a convict. They couldn't have liked each other less. They couldn't have needed each other more. And the last place they ever expected to be is on the same side, even for 48 HRs. Throughout his career, Nolte has proven himself to be a versatile actor, able to handle a wide range of roles and characters, whether playing a football player or a cop. He brings a level of intensity and commitment to every performance. Nick Nolte's artistic vision is deeply rooted in his personal experiences and worldview. The actor is known for his intense preparation and immersion into his roles, often drawing from his own life to create authentic and compelling characters. Nolte's approach to his work is unique in that he seeks to find the truth in each character, even if it means challenging himself physically and emotionally. One example of Nolte's unique style is his portrayal of Tom Wingo in The Prince of Tides. To prepare for the role, Nolte spent time in South Carolina, where the film is set, to understand the culture and accent of the region. He also underwent physical training to convincingly portray a former football player. Nolte's dedication to his craft is evident in the film's powerful and nuanced performance. Another aspect of Nolte's artistic vision is his willingness to take on complex and challenging roles. In Affliction, Nolte plays a troubled and violent character struggling with addiction and mental health issues. The actor's raw and intense performance earned him critical acclaim and a nomination for an Academy Award. Nolte's personal experiences and worldview are also reflected in his work. The actor has been open about his struggles with addiction and how it has informed his performances. In Down and Out in Beverly Hills, Nolte is a homeless man who finds redemption and purpose. The role allowed Nolte draw from his own experiences and create a character that is both authentic and relatable. In addition to his film work, Nolte has also made a mark in television. His performance in the series Grave showcases his ability to balance humor and drama, creating a complex and compelling character. Nolte's willingness to take on diverse roles and his dedication to his craft have made him a respected and admired figure in the entertainment industry. Overall, Nick Nolte's artistic vision and process are characterized by his intense preparation, willingness to take on complex roles, and ability to draw from his personal experiences to create authentic and compelling characters. His unique style and approach have left a lasting impact on the film and television industry. In the film You Turn, the actor Nick Nolte portrays Jake McKenna, a character who wears a ring with a Freemasonic insignia. This detail was likely included to emphasize the character's morally questionable nature 
as conspiracy theories often link Freemasonry to various conspiracies. Directed by Oliver Stone, who is known for his interest in conspiracy theories, the film uses this symbolism to further define McKenna's unsavory personality. Following U-Turn, the actor was cast in Nightwatch as Inspector Cray. In this film, he co-starred with John C. Riley, and they would later appear together again in The Thin Red Line two years later. In The Deep, the actor portrayed David Sanders, and for the sake of authenticity, he and Jacqueline Bissett performed many of the underwater scenes themselves. However, the more dangerous sequences were left to the stunt doubles to ensure their safety. This classic film showcases the actor's dedication to his craft and his willingness to take on challenging roles. Nick Nolte, an actor of immense talent, has significantly influenced the film industry through his powerful performances and unique style. His ability to portray complex and flawed characters has left a lasting impact on both audiences and industry peers. In the late 1970s, Nolte quickly gained recognition for his work in films like Who'll Stop the Rain and North Dallas 40. His portrayal of emotionally intense characters struck a chord with audiences, paving the way for future anti-hero roles in Hollywood. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Nolte continued to challenge himself with diverse roles in films such as The Prince of Tides and Affliction. His commitment to authenticity and raw emotion earned him two Academy Award nominations, further solidifying his status as a formidable actor. Industry experts and fellow actors alike have praised Nolte's impact on the industry. Actor Willem Dafoe commented, Nick has a real dedication to the craft. He's not afraid to take risks and explore the darker aspects of his characters. Nolte's influence extends beyond his film roles, as he has also been a trailblazer in storytelling techniques. In the 1990s, he starred in the groundbreaking television series Rich Man, Poor Man, which helped to popularize the miniseries format and showcase the potential of long-form storytelling on television. Director Paul Schrader, who worked with Nolte on Affliction, noted Nick's commitment to his craft is unparalleled. He brings a depth and intensity to every role that is truly inspiring. In recent years, Nolte has continued to captivate audiences with his work in film and television, including his role in the classic series Graves and the critically acclaimed film Warrior. His enduring impact on the industry serves as a testament to his undeniable talent and dedication to his craft. As film historian Dr. Martha P. Nochimson put it, Nick Nolte's career is a classic example of an actor who has consistently pushed the boundaries of his craft, leaving an indelible mark on the industry and inspiring generations of actors to come. In the film Who'll Stop the Rain, the actor Nick Nolte took on the role of Ray Hicks. Notably, Nolte shaved off his mustache for this movie, a departure from his appearance in the deep release just a year prior. The character he played, Jack Cates, in the classic 48 HRS, proved to be influential. In fact, it served as inspiration for the Sonny Crockett character in the popular television series Miami Vice. Olivia Brown, who appeared in 48 HR, later became a regular on Miami Vice. The Thin Red Line is another film that features the actor's talent. This star-studded production includes four Oscar winners and four Oscar nominees, among them the actor himself, showcasing his caliber and the high-profile company he keeps. Nick Nolte, the actor, is known for his rugged charm and intense performances. But what about his life outside of the spotlight? In his personal life, Nolte is an avid outdoorsman, often spending his free time hiking and camping. This love for nature has seeped into his work, with many of his films featuring stunning landscapes and environmental themes. One such film is The Thin Red Line, where Nolte plays a hardened army sergeant fighting for survival on a remote Pacific island during World War II. The lush jungle setting is almost a character in itself, highlighting the stark contrast between the beauty of the natural world and the brutality of war. In addition to his passion for the outdoors, Nolte is also a dedicated philanthropist. He has been involved with various charitable organizations throughout his career, focusing on environmental conservation, animal welfare, and substance abuse recovery. One cause close to Nolte's heart is the National Resources Defense Council, an organization dedicated to protecting the environment and wildlife. Nolte has been a longtime supporter and has even lent his voice to their campaigns, using his platform to raise awareness about pressing environmental issues. Another cause near to Nolte's heart is substance abuse recovery. Having struggled with addiction himself earlier in his career, Nolte is now a vocal advocate for recovery programs and has even started his own foundation to support those in need. Nolte's personal values, 
and interests have undoubtedly informed his work as an actor, adding depth and authenticity to his performances. His love for nature and dedication to philanthropy serve as a reminder that even in the world of Hollywood, there is room for passion and purpose beyond the silver screen. In the film Cape Fear, Nick Nolte played the role of Sam Bowden, a character originally portrayed by Gregory Peck in the 1962 version. Interestingly, Peck and his co-star Robert Mitchum had a strained relationship during the filming of the initial version, and they did not share any scenes together in the remake. Moving on to the deep, Nolte was not the first choice for the lead role of David Sanders. Director Peter Yates had reservations, and the studio executives believed Nolte wasn't a big enough star. However, producer Peter Guber saw potential in Nolte, leading to a tense meeting that eventually turned into a two-hour discussion, resulting in Yates offering the role to Nolte. In Nightwatch, Nolte, an Oscar-nominated actor, shared the screen with other accomplished artists, including Patricia Arquette, an Oscar winner, and Josh Brolin, Brad Dourif, and John C. Riley, all Oscar nominees. This film is a testament to Nolte's ability to hold his own among Hollywood's elite. Nick Nolte has left an indelible mark on the film industry with his powerful performances and distinctive acting style. With a career spanning over five decades, the actor has delivered many memorable roles in films like The Prince of Tides, Cape Fear, and 48 HRs. His ability to portray complex, and flawed characters has earned him critical acclaim and the admiration of audiences worldwide. As for his future contributions, Nolt shows no signs of slowing down. At the age of 80, he continues to take on challenging roles and push himself as an artist. In recent years, he has appeared in several successful TV shows, including Graves and Emergence, demonstrating his versatility and adaptability in the ever-evolving entertainment industry. For aspiring professionals in the field, Nolte offers the following advice always be true to yourself and never stop learning. Take risks and challenge yourself to grow as an artist. Surround yourself with people who inspire you and support your dreams. And most importantly, never give up on your passion. Indeed, Nolte's legacy serves as a testament to the power of perseverance and the importance of staying true to one's artistic vision. His contributions to the world of film and television will continue to resonate with audiences for generations to come. Nick Nolte's career began in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where he worked as a model for print ads at the Eleanor Moore Agency. While waiting for a television commercial to start filming in New York, he decided to make use of his time by auditing acting classes taught by Sandy Meisner and Stella Adler. Nolte's relationship with Clyde Lane lasted for 13 years before they eventually tied the knot on September 8, 2016. Their love story is a testament to the fact that sometimes, true love takes time to blossom fully. Throughout his career, Nolte has become a household name in the film industry, known for his exceptional talent and dedication to his craft. His work has left an indelible mark on audiences worldwide, and his legacy continues to inspire aspiring actors to this day. Nolte's commitment to his art is evident in the way he immerses himself in his roles, delivering powerful and memorable performances that resonate with viewers long after the credits have rolled. His ability to bring complex characters to life has earned him critical acclaim and the admiration of his peers. In conclusion, Nick Nolte's journey from a model in Minneapolis to a successful actor in Hollywood is a testament to his talent, hard work, and dedication. His love story with Clyde Lane is a reminder that sometimes, the best things in life are worth waiting for. Through his work, Nolte has left an enduring mark on the film industry, inspiring generations of actors and audiences alike. Born in 1941, Nick Nolte's passion for acting took flight in the 1970s. His groundbreaking roles in films like The Deep and 48 HRS showcased his innovative spirit. The actor's ability to embody complex characters set him apart making him a driving force in the industry. In the 1990s, Nolte's career reached new heights with iconic films such as Cape Fear and The Prince of Tides, earning him an Academy Award nomination. His commitment to his craft was unwavering, often taking on challenging roles that required immense emotional depth. On television, Nolte continued to make his mark with the gritty drama Rich Man, Poor Man, and the gripping series Graves. This classic actor's work resonates with audiences, leaving a lasting impact on the entertainment landscape. Throughout his career, Nolte has faced adversity, including personal struggles and setbacks. Yet, his resilience and determination have allowed him to persevere, creating a body of work that continues to inspire. Nick Nolte's journey serves as a testament to the power of creativity and perseverance. 
his enduring impact on the entertainment industry is a reminder that taking risks and pushing boundaries can lead to a rich and inspiring legacy. In 1990, the actor Nick Nolte took on a challenging role in the film Q&A, for which he gained 50 pounds. This significant transformation was a testament to his commitment as a performer. It is worth noting that Nolte had a history of heavy drinking around this time. In fact, when Catherine Hepburn accused him of falling down drunk in every gutter in town, he responded with a casual remark, I've got a few to go yet. This anecdote gives insight into the personal struggles he faced during his career. Fast forward to November 20, 2017, when the Hollywood Walk of Fame honored Nolte with a star at 64 through 3 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. This recognition was a long-awaited milestone in his career, celebrating his contributions to the film industry. Despite his past battles, Nolte's resilience and dedication to his craft have earned him a place among the greats in Hollywood. The star on the Walk of Fame serves as a tangible reminder of his impact on cinema and the enduring legacy he leaves behind. Nick Nolte's performance as Ray Hicks in Who'll Stop the Rain showcases his dedication to his craft. Despite the physical discomfort of wearing a back brace to maintain a rigid marine posture throughout much of the filming, Nolte delivered a memorable performance. In the classic film 48 HRFs, Nolte's portrayal of Jack Cates greatly boosted his career and introduced the world to comedian Eddie Murphy. Murphy's debut in this film is considered one of the most sensational in screen history, similar to Lauren Buckhall's and To Have and Have Not. As a student, Nolte attended Kingsley Elementary School in Waterloo, Iowa. Despite his successful film career, this early educational experience remains a part of his personal history. Nick Nolte's father, Franklin and Nolte, was a notable figure in his own right. A talented athlete, he was an All-American candidate at Iowa State in 1934 and served in the Pacific Theater during World War II with the elite U.S. Marine Raiders. However, his experiences in the war changed him, and he became a quieter, more distant figure when he returned home. Despite this, Nick Nolte sought his insights while preparing for his role as a Vietnam veteran in the 1978 film Who'll Stop the Rain. In the same year, Nick Nolte's personal life took a tumultuous turn when his girlfriend of five years, Karen Eklund, sued him for community property and support. The details of the lawsuit are not publicly known, but it is clear that the relationship had come to an end. Fast forward to December 12, 2002, when Nick Nolte found himself in legal trouble once again. He pleaded no contest to charges of driving under the influence and was given three years probation. As part of his sentence, he was ordered to undergo alcohol and drug counseling with random testing required. This incident was a sobering reminder of the consequences of substance abuse. Throughout his career and personal life, Nick Nolte has faced both triumphs and challenges. From seeking his father's guidance for a film role to navigating complicated relationships and legal issues, he has remained a prominent figure in the entertainment industry. Nick Nolte, the accomplished actor, hails from a diverse ancestry of English, German, Scottish, Scots-Irish, and Swiss-German descent. His paternal grandfather was a farmer in Iowa, contributing to his deep American roots. In the 1982 film Lorenzo's Oil, Nolte took on the role of Augusto Odon, an Italian character. Interestingly, the actor himself does not have any Italian heritage, demonstrating his versatility in portraying diverse roles. In the classic film 48 HR, Nolte played the character Jack Cates, alongside co-star Eddie Murphy. It's worth noting that while Nolte received a salary of us $1 million, Murphy earned us $450,000 for their first collaboration. In the sequel Another 48 HR, the pay gap between the two actors widened, with Nolte earning us $3 million and Murphy receiving us $7 million. This discrepancy reflects the varying levels of stardom and compensation in the film industry during that time. After his first stage appearance in The Hasty Heart at the Phoenix Little Theater, Nick Nolte's career took an exciting turn. In the 1982 film 48 HRS, Nolte, playing Jack Cates, had a notable collaboration with Eddie Murphy. It's said that most of their dialogue was improvised, contributing to their undeniable on-screen chemistry. In 1979, Nolte set his sights on the role of Captain Benjamin L. Willard in Apocalypse Now. When Harvey Keitel was let go, Nolte assumed he would take over the part. However, Francis Ford Coppola had other plans and gave the role to Martin Sheen. This unexpected turn of events didn't halt Nolte's rise to fame, but it must have been a disappointment for the dedicated actor. Nonetheless, he continued to deliver impressive performances in various roles, making his mark in the film industry. 
In 1966, Mick Nolte made his stage debut in The Miracle Worker at the Phoenix Little Theater, cast as Helen Keller's brother. Interestingly, his first wife, Sheila Page, played Annie Sullivan in the same production. Their marriage was open, reflecting a less conventional time. Nolte had several near misses with roles that eventually went to Kurt Russell. He declined the part of Snake Plissken in Escape from New York and was considered for R.J. McCready in The Thing, but neither role materialized for him. Additionally, he was set to star in Tequila Sunrise, but dropped out. In Martin Scorsese's Cape Fear, Nolte and Robert De Niro both underwent physical transformations for their roles. Nolte, standing at 6'0", and naturally muscular, lost weight for the film to appear smaller than De Niro, who bulked up. This change mirrored the original film's height difference between Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum, the first actors to play Sam Bowden and Max Cady, respectively. Peck, standing at 6'3", was taller than Mitchum, who was 6'1". In the 1991 remake, Nolte and De Niro continued this physical dynamic, adding another layer to the tense relationship between their characters. Mick Nolte was initially set to host Eddie Murphy and Lionel Richie in 1982 for the promotional tour of the film 48 HRS. However, he fell ill and had to back out, leading to Eddie Murphy hosting in his place. Later, in 2008, Nolte was cast in Pride and Glory, but an old knee injury from his football days flared up, forcing him to withdraw from the film. In the classic film U-Turn, Nolte Jake McKenna alongside four Oscar winners, Sean Penn, John Voight, Billy Bob Thornton, and Joaquin Phoenix, as well as two Oscar nominees, Nick Nolte and Laurie Metcalf. Despite these setbacks, Nolte's career has been marked by his ability to work with some of the biggest names in the industry. His roles in various films and shows have solidified his place as a respected and accomplished actor. In the fall of 1966, the actor Nick Nolte became a part of the actor's inner circle in Phoenix, Arizona. There, he took on the role of Val in Tennessee Williams' Orpheus Descending. This marked a significant milestone in his career, as it was one of his earliest major roles. Nolte has a granddaughter, a new addition to his family through his son Brawley, and daughter-in-law Nabi Rawat. Despite his busy career and personal life, the actor has undoubtedly made time for his family and loved ones. In the film you turn, Nolte portrayed Jake McKenna, a character that showcased his versatility as an actor. Interestingly, he shared the screen with Sean Penn in The Thin Red Line, Gangster Squad, and U-Turn, highlighting their enduring professional relationship. Nolte's career has been filled with memorable roles and collaborations, and his impact on the film industry is undeniable. His work continues to resonate with audiences, leaving a lasting impression for generations to enjoy. Nick Nolte played the role of Philip Elliott in the film North Dallas 40. The movie's rights were acquired by Columbia Pictures in 1973, beating out a competing offer. Nolte would later reunite with the studio for The Deep. The film's producer, Stanley Schneider, had originally acquired the rights to North Dallas 40 while still at Columbia, and took the project with him when he left to become an independent producer. In U-Turn, Nolte starred alongside Jennifer Lopez. The two would later appear together in Parker. Nolte's father was an irrigation pump salesman and an all-American candidate at Iowa State in 1934. His mother worked as a department store buyer. Nolte has an older sister, Nancy, who served as an executive for the Red Cross. Nick Nolte came close to playing iconic roles originally intended for Harrison Ford. The actor was considered for Ford's parts in Star Wars Episode IV. A New Hope, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Blade Runner. Additionally, Walter Hill wanted Nolte to star in The Fugitive, but Nolte reportedly declined due to his fatigue with action movies and feeling too old for the role. In the 1998 film The Thin Red Line, Nolte portrayed Lieutenant Colonel Tall, one of many soldiers with short, one-syllable names, including Fife, Wit, Gaff, and Welsh. In 2007, at the age of 66, Nolte became a father for the second time when his girlfriend, Clitty Lane, gave birth to their daughter, Sophie Lane. This addition to his family further solidified Nolte's place as a dedicated father, an actor, even in the later stages of his career. In the film North Dallas 40, the actor Nick Nolte takes on the role of Philip Elliott, a character at odds with the system of his chosen profession. Once again, Nolte embodies a character who challenges the status quo, and questions the rules of the game. Moving on to rich man, poor man, Nolte portrays Tom Jordak, a character who undergoes a significant physical transformation throughout the series. At the beginning, Nolte weighed around 160 pounds, but by the end, 
he had gained over 20 pounds to accurately depict his character's aging process. Finally, in Who'll Stop the Rain, Nolte plays Ray Hicks, a role he is particularly proud of, despite the film's poor box office performance. Nolte, thanks director Carol Reese for his work on this classic, showcasing the actor's dedication to his craft and his appreciation for thoughtful direction. Nick Nolte narrowly missed out on the role of Jeffrey Goins in the 1995 film 12 Monkeys, which eventually went to Brad Pitt. Despite his enthusiasm for the part, Nolte's busy schedule prevented him from securing the role. In another instance, Nolte fiercely campaigned for the part of Ned Braden in the 1977 classic Slapshot. However, his lack of skating skills proved to be a significant obstacle, and the role ultimately went to Michael on Keane. Nolte became a father for the first time at the age of 45 when his third wife, Rebecca Linger, gave birth to their son, Brawley Nolte, on June 20, 1986. The actor embraced his new role as a father and undoubtedly brought his unique perspective to the experience. In the film U-Turn, the actor Nick Nolte, who plays Jake McKenna, reunites with Powers Booth, his co-star from Extreme Prejudice. Both actors once again don similar outfits, with Nolte in black and Booth in white, reminiscent of their previous collaboration. Directed by Walter Hill and written by John Milius, who also penned Conan the Barbarian, the film brings together a talented cast and crew. Before his acting career took off, the actor attended Omaha Benson High School and later transferred to Omaha Westside High School in Nebraska. In the deep, the actor, alongside Louis Gossett Jr., Jacqueline Bisset, Robert Shaw, and directed by Peter Yates, had to learn how to scuba dive for the movie. The challenging task added an extra layer of authenticity to their underwater scenes. In U-Turn, the actor's character, Jake McKenna, shares many similarities with his role in Extreme Prejudice, including their wardrobe choices. Both films were directed by Walter Hill and featured tough, no-nonsense characters. The actor's ability to embody these complex roles is a testament to his range and talent as a performer. Meanwhile, in the deep, the actor had to learn a new skill, scuba diving, to bring his character to life. This willingness to take on new challenges and push himself as an artist is just one example of the actor's dedication to his craft. In both U-Turn and The Deep, the actor delivers powerful performances that leave a lasting impression on audiences. His ability to fully inhabit each character and bring them to life is a true testament to his talent and skill as an actor. In the early 1970s, the actor Nick Nolte took on the role of Jess in the world premiere of William Engie's The Last Pad at the Southwest Ensemble Theater of Phoenix. The play followed Jess, a young man facing execution for murdering his wife. It opened at the Carr Cultural Center in Scottsdale, Arizona, before moving to the Unitarian Church in Phoenix and then to the Contempo Theater in Los Angeles. Later, in 1984, Nolte starred alongside Susan Sarandon in Lorenzo's Oil, a powerful drama based on a true story. The film also featured Sir Peter Ustinov and Laura Linney, both of whom had been nominated for Oscars. Nolte's portrayal of Augusto Odon, the father of a child with a rare neurological disorder, earned him critical acclaim. In 1978, Nolte appeared in Who'll Stop the Rain as Ray Hicks, a character who becomes embroiled in a dangerous scheme involving drug trafficking. Ray Sharkey, who played a small role in the film, had previously appeared with Nolte in Heartbeat in 1980. Throughout his career, Nolte has proven himself to be a versatile and talented actor, taking on a wide range of roles in films and television shows that have captivated audiences for decades. After performing in several productions at the Little Theater of the Rockies in Greeley, Colorado, Nick Nolte received a special opportunity in 1966. His father attended his performance for the first time, watching him play Martin Luther in John Osborne's Luther. In the 1992 film The Player, Nolte acted alongside an impressive cast of Oscar-winning actors and actresses, totaling 12, and another 15 who had received Oscar nominations. Among them were Cher, James Coburn, Louise Fletcher, and Whoopi Goldberg, as well as producer and director Sidney Pollack, who made a cameo appearance. Nolte's collaboration with writer and director Walter Hill resulted in three films 48 HRs, Extreme Prejudice, and another 48 HRS. In 48 HRs, Nolte played the role of Jack Cates, marking the beginning of their successful partnership. In the early 1970s, the actor Nick Nolte made his first on-screen appearances, although they were both uncredited roles. His debut came in the 1973 film Electra Glide in Blue, where he played a hippie kid. Interestingly, the director, James William Gersio, 
had originally intended to give Nolte a speaking part. However, due to budget constraints, this plan didn't come to fruition. The previous year, Nolte had also appeared in Dirty Little Billy, further solidifying his early foray into acting. One of Nolte's notable roles was in the 1979 film North Dallas 40. The character Philip Elliott, portrayed by Nolte, was based on Peter Gent, a former wide receiver. The film explores the world of professional football, with Seth Maxwell, played by Mac Davis, representing Don Meredith, and B.A. Struthers, played by G.D. Spradlin, based on Tom Landry. Delving into Nolte's family history, his maternal grandparents played significant roles in their respective fields. Lucy Millicent Mashur, his grandmother, ran the student union at Iowa State University. Meanwhile, his grandfather, Matthew Leander King, was a prominent engineer who invented the hollow tile silo and was a leader in early aviation. These influential figures undoubtedly shaped Nolte's upbringing and background. Nick Nolte has a close friendship with writer-director Alan Rudolph, having collaborated on four films together. One of Nolte's most famous roles was as Jack Cates in the 1982 film 48 HRs. The main film poster featured Nolte in the background with co-star Eddie Murphy in the foreground, provocatively raising his middle finger. However, when the film aired on I, TV in the UK in the late 1980s, the middle finger was airbrushed out in the poster used during advertising breaks, altering the original image. Nolte was born to Franklin Arthur and Helen Nolte. His parents played a significant role in shaping his life and career, although specific details about their influence are not provided. Nevertheless, Nolte's upbringing and family background contributed to his success in the film industry. In the 1998 film, The Thin Red Line, Nick Nolte, as Lieutenant Colonel Tall, quotes the Greek poet Homer, saying, Eos rotogactylos, rosy-fingered dawn to Captain Staros. This same phrase is used again by Nolte in the 22 film, The Good Thief. In 1982, the actor was considered for the role of John Rambo in First Blood, which eventually went to Sylvester Stallone. Nolte's character, Augusto Odon, in the classic film Lorenzo's Oil, pays tribute to Susan Sarandon's character with the word Bravo, a nod to Jack Nicholson's character in the 1987 film The Witches of Eastwick. These examples show how Nolte's work is interconnected, with recurring themes and phrases that tie his characters and films together. In the film The Deep, Nick Nolte, playing the character of David Sanders, shared a tumultuous relationship with co-star Jacqueline Bissett at the start of production. However, things took a turn, and the two actors ended up in a romantic relationship for most of the filming. Producer Peter Guber saw this as a positive aspect, believing that their chemistry would enhance the dramatic scenes in the movie. In a less positive light, the actor had a run-in with the law in 2002. After being arrested for drunk driving in Malibu, California, he checked himself into Silver Hill Hospital in Connecticut for counseling. It was later discovered that he had GHB, the date rape drug, in his system. In Who'll Stop the Rain, Nick Nolte portrayed Ray Hicks, who, while driving on Interstate 5 southbound, informed Marge that their destination in L.A. was eight hours away. This would have been accurate during the film's production, as the national speed limit was reduced to 55 m due to the oil crisis in 1974. However, the movie is set in 1971, and the journey would likely have taken only six hours, depending on traffic. Let's take a moment to appreciate the work of Nick Nolte a truly captivating actor who has left an indelible mark on the film industry. With his rugged charm and powerful performances, he has graced both the big and small screens for several decades. One of his most memorable roles came in the form of Tom Wingo in The Prince of Tides, a complex character struggling with emotional turmoil. Nolte's portrayal resonated with audiences and critics alike, earning him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. In the critically acclaimed film Affliction, Nolte delivered another riveting performance as a troubled man unraveling under the weight of his past. His ability to embody such intricate characters showcases his immense talent and adaptability as an actor. Nolte has also made his mark in television, with notable roles in series like Rich Man, Poor Man, and Graves. His work in these shows further highlights his versatility and enduring appeal. As you reflect on the career of this accomplished actor, Share your thoughts on his most memorable performances and how they have impacted you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content celebrating the creative spirits shaping entertainment. Let's keep the conversation.